the best way to cook venison backstrap on the stove is in a cast iron skillet. So what Mr. Cast Iron's making today is pan fried deer steaks from the backstrap. And I love deer meat for dinner. You try this simple venison backstrap recipe and I think you will too. So let's get started. We're gonna get ready and pan fry some venison backstrap. You guys ready? Let's go. Now the very first thing I wanna do is get a couple eggs uh, in this bowl along with some buttermilk. First, we're gonna just whip these eggs up here real good. Mix them up real nice. This is gonna be kinda of like our marinade in a way, and our dredge, actually. And we're only gonna put, oh, about a pint of uh, buttermilk on top of those two eggs, and then we just need to kinda of mix that all in together right there. We need to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Now you could add hot sauce or something like that if you wanted to. Uh, you can put just about anything in here that you want for your dredge. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take and rinse our back strap off. Now these are small back strap from a, a small younger deer and uh, so they're going to be real good and tender i mean they're they're nice we could cook them whole if we wanted to but we're going to make these into deer steaks and pan fry them in a cast iron skillet next thing i want to do is just pat them dry try to get a little bit of that moisture off now what i do is i salt and pepper uh, actually, before we do that, we got just a little bit of silver skin here, and we need to trim that up. So if you have any of that, you need to do that. Now, as I was saying, what I do that a lot of people don't do is I salt and pepper my back strap before I ever add it into the dredge and before I ever put it into flour. Now some people don't flour theirs. We're breading ours today, pan fried. Some people just like to pan sear them. And that's okay, that's great too. But for today, we're gonna be doing these back straps in cast iron and they're gonna be breaded. Now that we've got these salt and peppered, we're just gonna cut these into probably about one inch thick steaks. So it's gonna be about that thick right there. They're just gonna be perfect little uh, backstrap bites. You can call them backstrap steaks, deer, tender, tenderloin. Now there's a difference between backstrap. Let me clarify that. There's a difference between backstrap and tenderloin. Backstrap is actually the two pieces of meat or the two pieces of muscle uh, on either side of the backbone of a deer or any animal for that matter. The tenderloin is actually on the inside, on the underneath side of the backbone. There's two pieces of meat right there, two pieces of muscle, and that is actually your tenderloin. This is actually the back strap that's uh, two, two muscles on either side of the, uh, the backbone. And these are gonna be perfect, man. I mean, this is just, it's a young deer and they're tender already. So it's not gonna take a lot, but we're gonna put this in our uh, buttermilk and egg mixture here for two reasons. Number one, we're gonna let them sit here and marinate for several minutes while we get our skillet ready, while we get our biscuits. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna have some biscuits and I may even make some uh, gravy to go along with this. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our cast iron heated up. Now the thing about this is you don't want to heat this uh, extremely hot. Now if you're pan searing them you may want to go to a medium uh, medium or medium high but for frying these we're going to do right about medium and I'm going to be using you could use just about any kind of grease you want to use. You could use olive oil whatever you want but I'm gonna use some strained bacon grease. 
You guys know I love my bacon grease and it's real good for deer meat. So we're gonna put about, oh, probably three, I'm gonna say four good sized tablespoons of uh, strained bacon grease. Do not throw your bacon grease away, folks. Be sure and keep that. There's nothing like bacon grease to cook meat in. Here we're gonna let that heat up to about 300, 325 degrees. And in the meantime, what we're gonna do is go ahead and salt and pepper this flour. I've got just some AP flour, all-purpose flour here. And we're gonna use this as our breading uh, for the dredge. So just be sure and salt and pepper this to your liking. I just heard the buzzer go off, timer, and for the preheating of the oven. And so what we have here is another cast iron skillet that we're preheating to 350 degrees. And what I'm gonna be doing is just making some canned biscuits. Okay, well, we've got our biscuits in the oven. Our bacon grease looks and feels like it's hot enough. I've got a little bit of uh, water here. This is one way you can test your grease. Put a little water in there. If it bounces like that, you know your grease is just about right. Now what we've got, we've got our flour and we've got our back strap pieces that we've cut. And so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna drop these into our flour. We'll get three or four of them in there. The next thing we wanna do is just kinda be sure and coat these real good. Make sure you get it completely coated real well. And then we're just gonna drop these in here. And we're not gonna cook these for very long. Probably about two minutes on each side, maybe three. Now these have uh, marinated for about 20 minutes. And you can marinate them overnight or, or whatever, hour or so if you wanted to, a couple hours, whatever, however much time you have. Some people like to do them overnight, but we didn't really have the time for that today. But what marinating them in buttermilk does, it kind of takes the gamey taste away from deer meat. If, uh, you know, if you're a person that doesn't really like venison, uh, you know, sometimes depending on how it was processed, it may have a little bit of a gamey flavor to it but you can eliminate that by soaking it in either milk or buttermilk, either one, overnight. And uh, that, that'll help take a lot of that away, but you know, that doesn't really bother me much. So anyway, we'll get these all breaded up, and floured up real good. And I'm gonna add just a few more to my skillet. You don't wanna overcrowd your skillet. You wanna let these be able to fry. So we've got about eight pieces. So we'll let those fry a little bit. Okay, we got a few of these. We're gonna go ahead and turn them. Uh, man, look how crispy they're getting. That looks so golden. These need a little bit more, but we'll roll them back over and get that in a minute. Nothing like breaded pan fried backstrap in a cast iron skillet. Some of these are probably just about ready to pull. I want you to look at that. I mean, I want you to look how golden brown that is. Now, I don't stick them with a thermometer. You could, but I mean, I just kind of do it by by feel of what the 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 tenderloin or the backstrap feels like when I touch it with my fork, and how it looks on the outside. I mean, if they're golden brown like this, I mean that that is perfect right there. So we're gonna let these other ones cook here for a little bit while our biscuits are continuing to cook. We're gonna add a few more of these in here to this. And we're gonna have some awesome backstrap for dinner tonight. Well, our timer went off. Let's see, check these biscuits out here. See what they look like. There's them biscuits. I'm gonna leave them back in there for a little bit. Well, as you can see, we've got our deer backstrap fried and we got this grease here and some leftover flour. What do you do with leftover flour? Well, you add a little bit of it to your bacon grease. Do not get rid of those chunks and little pieces of uh, that was cooked off of the uh, 
the back strap while it was cooking. Leave those little pieces in there, those little chunks. Add you some flour in there into your grease. Let that begin to brown a little bit uh, so it will knock off the uh, flour taste. You, know, you don't want your gravy tasting like flour. I put just a little bit of water in mine and then I come right back with some milk. I just basically put the water in there to kind of help degrease that bottom. I mean, milk will do it too. This skillet's a little hot, naturally. But boy, this is gonna make some great gravy right here. And many of you know how to make gravy, many of you don't. Uh, I know a lot of people that uh, say they just can't make gravy. But gravy's really actually pretty simple. It's one of the first things my mother helped or taught me in the kitchen. And the reason why is because you had to sit there and stir it like this right here. She, she taught me to stir and uh, you just add your milk gradually. You don't pour a whole bunch in there at one time. But the key was at the very beginning was be sure and take them uh, your uh, flour and get it mixed into your, uh, your grease and let it cook down for a few minutes uh until it almost browns itself and that'll that'll take the flour taste away and uh then you just uh once you get that all mixed into like a paste you can add you a little bit of water or you know some people that's all they use is water and then there's some people all they use is milk so you just start to add your liquid to it and just continue to stir until your gravy gets to the thickness that you want. And uh, that's basically how you, you, make, uh, you make gravy. Now, if you noticed, I haven't added any salt and pepper to this. And the reason why is because all the venison was breaded, it was, it was salted prior to being breaded. And then the flour, the breading itself had salt and pepper in it. So, we put some of that flour in here. We certainly don't want it to be too salty. And uh, so we're not gonna add any salt to this. Now what I, I may do is go ahead. I know it will need some pepper. I mean, pepper's great for gravy. And so we also got our biscuits out. They're looking pretty good right there. And uh, here we've got uh, venison steaks, basically, backstrap. And we got some gravy going here. We got some biscuits. So I'm gonna let this finish up here and I'm gonna plate this up and show you what this looks like here. We'll be right back. Well, we got her all done and that's what it looks like right there. And I tell you what, we're gonna give that a bite. Don't you look how golden brown that is. But we're gonna taste it. Mmm, mmm. That's so juicy and tender. I want you to look at that. I mean, that's probably medium, medium well. So we've got that made up. We've got some biscuits and gravy here and uh, nothing like it, man. Nothing like deer meat for dinner. So the best way to cook venison backstrap on the stove is definitely in a cast iron skillet. No doubt about it. Folks, we hope you appreciate this. Hey, YouTube has put a video right here specifically for you. Check on that, and we'll see you guys over there. Y'all have a great day. It's Mike over here at Mr. Cast Iron. We're going to enjoy these biscuits and gravy and backstrap. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Mm. Wow.